Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm back here in sitting in my backyard, and I have a very fun story to tell you. Last year, I was while crafting some cleavers herb uh, in a wet part of the mountains, and uh, I brought it home to I wild crafted it brought some home to put up in a fresh tincture and uh, I cleavers is called cleavers because it cleaves it it it's sticky and it grabs holds of things well I brought it home I was sitting back here washing off the plant and uh, what happened was a lot of the seeds from the cleavers stuck to my jeans and I brushed them off and didn't think anything more of it. And then this spring, I looked down into my wild garden and cleavers was popping up. Absolutely unexpected. A hitchhiker plant that just decided to take the opportunity to grow here. And this is a dry, hot area. And this is not the natural habitat for cleavers but we happened to have a very wet spring with a lot of rain. And so there it was. So I've been watering it like crazy and now it's, I wanna talk about it because it's right here in front of us. And uh, so if you just bear with me uh, and we'll try to get a little close up of this plant. So cleavers grows along it, it's like a, a vine and it, it creeps along the ground and uh, it sticks to things. This is a very sticky plant. It'll stick to my hands. It'll stick to my clothing. There it is on my, on my knee. It's just not going anywhere. So that's how come the, uh, the seeds stuck. And so the uh, botanical name for this plant is, uh, is Gallium aparine. And uh, another plant in the same family you may have heard of is bed straw. Well, there's something very characteristic about this plant, and it's the leaf arrangement. A lot of leaves are like arranged opposite on a stem or alternately on a stem. But look at these leaves. Can you see that it goes around in a circle, kind of like a pinwheel? This is called a world leaf arrangement. W, uh, uh, how do you spell that? World, like a, a whirly, a, something whirling around. So it goes around the stem in a little whirl, and you can see that this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaves going around in a little pinwheel, uh, radiating out from the stem. And the other thing that's kind of sweet about this, it has teeny tiny little white flowers. And I don't know if you can see that right there. They're so small, you might even need a magnifying glass. And they're little teeny white flowers that have four petals. A lot, a lot of times when you're looking at plants, you need a magnifying glass to really see what's going on. So there they are. Here's some more coming out on the end of this, this leaf right here. And so when these mature, they get, they, they form little tiny balls. And those are the, those are the things that stuck to my clothes, to my, to the bottom of my jeans. They were all over the cuffs and inside the cuffs. And I just sort of tried to get myself cleaned off before I went inside and there they were. The, uh, scattering around into the dirt. So this is the cleaver's plant and it makes fabulous medicine. So um, the main thing that cleaver's does, it's really best when it's freshly tinctured, like I showed you in a previous uh, video with valerian root. But uh, what, it, what it really is, it's a detoxifier. So it takes toxins out of the body. And the way, there's many ways that that can happen. And 
the mechanism of action for cleavers is that it works by draining lymph. Lymph is a fluid that runs through the body and connects to the, um, the bloodstream. And it carries uh, lymphocytes, it carries, it's part of the immune system. And so it can draw toxins away and into the blood, which can then be eliminated mainly through the, uh, the urine. So cleavers works, and the other place that it can be eliminated is through the skin. Toxins get out through the skin, the bowel, and the urine mainly. And so cleavers works on the skin, and it works on the urinary tract, and even a little, and it also works with, uh, with raised bumps and things like that, because it's very dissolving. So uh, I use it for formulas, uh, urinary tract and formu formulas, and places where I need things to dissolve. Uh, because it works with the kidneys, I use it. It's a chief herb in a uh, formula that I use for somebody which deals with gout. And gout is really a urinary tract type of arthritis. It's, it's urinary based. So that, that's some of the uses. You can also use it uh, on skin things and uh, as a poultice to help skin heal and to help uh, things dissolve, such as a lump. You could uh, make a, uh, a poultice, which is a little uh, kind of tincture or, or a tea that's dipped in a cloth and put it on something so it would work for like a fibrocystic breast or, or something of that sort. So it also dissolves lumps. So cleavers is an incredibly useful herb. And what I'm gonna do here with this one, I'm not gonna pick it, I'm going to let this go to seed and see what happens to see if it pops up next year. So now I'm going to take you over to another part of the garden and show you one other plant. Hello, I'm back at another part of the garden and we just talked about cleavers, how it just showed up in a very dry and arid place that normally it wouldn't grow. And uh, I'm just going to point out that it's in another spot as well. Right down here, there's a whole clump of it. And I don't know if you can see this, but I'm, I'm lifting it up. You see how it's all sticking together in one clump? That's because of its sticky nature. And it also has a lot of tiny little flowers on here as well. So that's another spot where cleavers happen to grow. And, but what I wanna talk about is a plant that is very familiar to most of you, I'm sure. And it, it, what it's called is showy milkweed. And I didn't plant this, it just planted itself. And uh, the botanical name for showy milkweed is uh, es, es, Esclepius uh, speciosa. That's what it's called. And have you seen this? It's just starting to, uh, to bud. And in a few days, if the weather stays nice and warm, it'll be in beautiful flower. And one of the things that's really lovely about um, milkweed is that it's a way station for monarch butterflies. And the butterflies have been in trouble for um, a few years now because their migration patterns are getting disrupted with, uh, with, with development. And they love to settle down and take a, an overnight rest near the milkweed because it's a source of food for them. And so the more milkweed plants we can let grow wild in our gardens, the better off the butterflies will be. There, uh, the other insect that it attracts is bees. And bees are also having a hard time now. And so when this goes into flower, it has a wonderful smell smell it from many feet away and the bees come and enjoy it and the butterflies come and enjoy it and I come and enjoy it enjoy watching the bees and the butterflies enjoying themselves so it's really it's a win-win for for the whole planet so 
this is this has been used for medicine i haven't personally used it but it was used by native americans for medicine and it also can be used if you're willing to um to go the the extra nine yards to prepare it properly but one thing that's very easy to do with milkweed where does it get that name milk well i'm gonna break off a leaf and show you if you can see this see that white stuff that is a uh, latex and in another uh, many plants have latex in them and uh, dandelion has latex in it as well in the stem so here it is <clears throat> just overflowing out the bottom. If I just break up, break this leaf in the middle, down the center spine, you'll see the latex. Here's a spot where it's coming out. I'm not getting it everywhere. But there's a couple of examples. And you can see that this is very sticky. And this is medicine for warts. You can put this on warts and you can put it on stings and bites. So just the latex, that's an easy way. It's not done, taken internally. It's just used for a topical, topical medicine. So th this latex is also, okay, I'll put the leaf down and show you back to the plant. If you were to take this big, thick stem and break it, you would see the, the latex just pouring out of this. So uh, you can see that the arrangement of these big, huge leaves are alternate. They're just side by side up the stem. They're, um, I'm sorry, they're, um, they're not alternate, they're paired. They're, they're exactly opposite each other. And they go this way and then they go that way and so on. So that's the leaf arrangement. And then these flowers are getting ready to come out and bloom. And they can, these will probably be pinkish, reddish pink, kind of a fuchsia color. They range anywhere from light pink, I think, to dark pink. They may even be able to be white. There's a lot of different varieties of this. And so uh, milkweed has been used for medicine. Uh, the roots are used, but they generally, they have to be uh, uh, boiled. And that's true of, of the, uh, the upper part of the plant as well. So you have to make sure they can be toxic to grazing animals. But the, the roots have been used for digestive uh, purposes. And also the young shoots of this, when they first come up in the spring, maybe uh, six to eight inches long, if you boil them three or four times, they taste like asparagus. So uh, that's milkweed. And I want to show you one other thing about it. What happens is after these flowers bloom and the butterflies have gone, what happens is they start to form a fruit and they go into these very characteristic pods. Hi, we had a little technical difficulty, but here I wanted to show you what happens. Here's the plant, here's the flower, and right here is what is where the fruit comes. And this is the seed pod. And you may have seen these, these are very characteristic. They're large pods that form uh, after the flower dies down. And inside these pods are the seeds. And here is a close-up in the book of the seeds. And the seeds have, um, they're very fluffy and they fly all over the place. They sort of look like cottonwood seeds sometimes. And they're just carried by the wind and that's why it, they just will settle down anywhere and it's very you don't even have to plant it they just naturally propagate and birds like this uh, I, I've read that um, that 
goldfinches use this as part of their nesting material and uh, butterflies like to eat this in here too. So that's uh, milkweed and uh, so these are two plants that I have right in my back kind of wild backyard that is not very well cultivated but I hope you enjoyed this and uh, hope to see you again soon.